Dad. 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 D oh, Dad, what are you reading that for? Come on, we've got another rambling Bowyer's video to do. Oh, not another rambling video. What the f are we doing this time? Oh, well, you'll like this one. It's about spining your shaft. Where's the makeup going? I think you're going to need more than makeup. Come on. Hello everybody and welcome to another Richard Head Longbows video. Yes, it's our two old Bowyers rambling series, uh, though one of us I suppose is middle-aged and one of us is very, very old, which kind of evens out to two old Bowyers. Uh, uh, this is our series of uh, videos where we look at things that have cropped up that people are talking about either on the internet or have come around the workshop and asked us about things that are important that people perhaps don't realise that they're important uh, aspects of archery where uh, well, certainly particularly for beginners um, are very important and we're looking at spine you're probably wondering what all this equipment is here well this is a spine tester uh, and a lot of people don't necessarily know what spine is or indeed why spine is so important to their equipment. What is spine and what do we mean by spine? Well, as you say, spine uh, is important as far as accurate shooting goes. Mm. Uh, when you shoot an arrow from a longbow, as long as the arrow is, is well matched to the bow, as you shoot it, the arrow will bend as it goes past the bow. So it will bend away from the bow and will then straighten up again. Now, if the arrow shaft is too stiff, as you shoot it, it will hit the side of the bow and be deflected to the left if you're a right-handed shooter. If the arrow shaft is too much too whippy, and by that we mean this sort of flexibility of it, if it's too whippy, as you shoot it, it will go round to the right and will probably meander through the air in extreme mm. circumstances. Well, while we're explaining this, I will actually put up onto the screen some um, footage, which is no doubt playing now, uh, that we shot um, with the slow motion camera or as slow motion as we could manage, uh, about 240 frames, um, actually showing arrows leaving the bow. We actually used uh, flu flu. Yeah. Uh, in this instance, um, just to show something that you can't normally see when you are shooting, you can't see that flex that uh, Richard is, is talking about. They, the arrows seem stiff when you sort of hold them, but the power uh, of the bow does make them bend an awful lot more than you, you perhaps realise until you see the sort of footage that you're looking at at the moment. Yeah, I mean the bend is caused by the, the thrust of the string, so you get the back end of the arrow trying to catch up with the front end. And also, if you're using the normal sort of three-fingered loose on the string, that imparts a sideways push as well. So those two things together are forcing the arrow to, to bend. Uh, if the arrow is far too stiff for the bow, it will hit the side of the bow and, and be deflected off. Uh, it was really only in the 1930s and the advent of high-speed photography right. that people actually realized that the arrows were bending. Mm. Before that, people thought, well, it's rather odd that the string goes down towards the center of the bow, which means the arrow will be aiming to the left. Why does it then hit the target you're actually aiming at? And that was known as the archer's paradox. And it was, it was only the advent of the high-speed photography that people would see, oh yeah, it's actually bending as it goes mm, around the bow. Around. Mm. So it's important that this spine, the flexibility of the shaft, actually matches the draw weight of the bow, the length of the arrow, the style of shooting, the speed of the bow you've got, a, a lot of variables. Uh, so if you get that right, the arrow as it goes past the bow will bend around the bow, it won't touch the bow at all, and will then gradually straighten up, as you can see in the high speed film, and hopefully hit what you've actually been aiming at. So what do we mean by matching it to the bow, the spine, you, you, you've got an arrow, you need to know the spine of that to match it to the bow. What do we mean by you that? Do, you do need to know the spine, and that's where um, the spine tester comes in, so this is what um, we've got, which is what we've got, which we will we'll explain. Mm -hmm. um, but when you buy arrow shafts, you'll find that they're generally measured in uh, pounds. So 30, 35, that's 30, 35 pounds, 35, 40, 40, 45. And as a rule of thumb for an English longbow, uh, you need to take that particular weight 
and, and deduct £10 from it. It might seem a bit odd, but the weighting system we've got on arrow shafts that you buy in the shops is based on the American AMO system. Which is the, the, and, the, and the, what you the, get on the these pounds, charts. Yes, right. I mean, there was a, uh, they measured the deflection of an arrow shaft on supports 26 inches apart with a two pound weight and then measure the deflection in thousandths of an inch and then converted that to pounds. But they converted it to pounds to use with a modern uh, center shot bow where right. the, the spine is not quite so critical. Mm. So you've got to take their measurements. So if you've got a, a 50 pound bow, um, you would knock 50 uh, not 10 pounds off that so you don't want 40 pound mm. spine mm. shafts so it's, it's fairly complex but simple once you've got the hand it is but the then equation. that's for a 28 inch arrow right. if it's longer you've got to have a slightly stiffer shaft if it's shorter so, so the longer, you've got to have a whipping so the longer the shaft the more bendy it's going to be by its virtue its nature its well, length it, well that's right you imagine a 20 foot long arrow it would be all over the place so you need you need it it's it's, it's stiffer mm. um now with the spine tester, um, when arrow shafts are produced, uh, the manufacturers uh, test them for spine and then put them into to bunches. So we, we that buy we, them. That we, we know buy them. In we bunch buy them. Groups. But then we will re-spine them all because we know that the wood, once it's reduced down to this sort of size, will carry on seasoning mm. and, and tends to stiffen up a little yeah. bit. Yeah, well, we we've bought. We've got. Well, we've been doing this a long time. And when we have bought arrow shafts, I mean, even in a matter of sometimes weeks from receiving it from the manufacturer, if you've got a bunch, uh, and I then go to spine them on a machine like this, they can have, they can have altered dramatically from when we originally bought them in. Um, so not only is knowing what spine is and matching it to a bow important, it's also important to know that shafts can change and also that when you're buying them, or say you when you buy them from us and order them from us, and as Richard said, we will have re-spined them anyway. If you're going to a premises, um, one of the larger archery retailers where you can go and sit and use something yeah. like this yeah. on their premises, it's very worth doing because the the manufactured bunches that are there sat might might not be what they say they are anymore. No, that that's right. But there's not a lot of point in having a spine tester at home if you're just going to buy a dozen shafts. No. Uh, because they they might all be accurate. And if they're within the range, five pound range, mm. that's for most archers, that's that's fine. Mm. Um what did they do before spine testers? Well if you go back to Horace Ford, the Victorian archer who I think was twelve times uh, champion of, of England. I mean, he's saying about just bending them by hand and he could feel which shafts were suitable for his bow. Yeah. Now, so we, it's, we it's know, our, to it, we know getting, ourselves yeah, yeah. that we, we can virtually do, do yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, and maybe back into medieval times, uh, the Fletchers then would have had, had a shaft. And, and wood varies an, an awful lot. You can have a shaft the same diameter, two shafts, they vary tremendously. Mm. I mean all these 5 16th shafts are all the same diameter but they can range from virtually spineless up, up to about 50 pounds. Mm. So the medieval fletchers would probably have just done that and yeah that's okay mm. and, and put it in, mm. the, in the pile. Yeah so what can affect spine? So we said that, that the materials can mature and change uh, and that length affects the spine or the bendiness of the arrow, not to confuse everyone exactly what we mean by spine, but it means the bendiness of the arrow. What else can affect it? Can the weight of the pile... Well, yes, that, it, that, or... that will, yes. If you've got a heavy pile uh, on the end, that will uh, have the effect of making the arrow slightly whippier. Uh, so you've got, if you've got a shaft, you think, oh no, I think that's having made them up, oh, it's a bit stiff you could put a heavier pile on and that would have the effect of... So it's something that you can you. use to alter yeah, yourself. Yeah, you, you could put a lighter it. pile on, the size of fletches right. uh, will help. Um, say your The actual way you loose the string is very important and that can affect the flight of the arrow mm. probably more than worrying overly about the exact spine matching on Right, that. right, okay. 
Well, I think probably the best thing to do is to show you what the uh, spine tester does and how it works. That's explained yep. what spine is and, and how important it is. And we'll give you a quick look at this now uh, with a, a little bit more detail so you can see what it is. Okay, this is a spine tester. There are various models, uh, but they all do basically the same thing. This one has a scale on it which shows the deflection in thousandths of an inch, uh, the AMO uh, standard scale, and that relates to pounds, which is the, the bow weight. So, for example, 0 0.6 of an inch is roughly just over 45 pounds. So you don't need to worry about that. It's, it's the pounds that are the important bit when you're comparing uh, shafts unless you want to go to the nth degree and measure in thousands. So the rest of it is two supports, 26 inches apart, uh, a two pound weight, which will hang from the center of the shaft and a pointer, which will move, showing the deflection, the arrow shaft. We put the shaft on the scale with the grain uppermost. So when you look down on it, you can see the lines of the grain. So that's the stiffest section of the shaft. So when the shaft is actually in the bow, those lines of grain will be running horizontally. So when you look down the arrow, you'll see the spears of the grain rather than those uh, lines. So shaft in on the 26 inch supports, there's an adjuster here so we can move the pointer down to zero it and that allows for the different variations in thickness of shaft and the odd slight bend there is going to be in it. Very few wooden shafts are absolutely 100% straight. So that's in the spine tester. We now take the two pound weight and just gently put it on the shaft just to the right of the support. So it's in the center of the shaft and you can see this pointer moving up and that's ended up at just about 40 pounds. So we can assume that one's a 40 pound shaft. So take this weight off again, put it down, put the shaft aside and then do the next one. There you go folks, hopefully that's explained how important spine is and if you need to know what spine shafts you need to match your bow, give us a shout and we can help you out. We can even sell you the relevant bits if you want to buy from us. If you want to check out more of our rambling videos, there's one on the screen now and if you'd like to subscribe and like and all that other stuff, that would be much appreciated. Thanks for watching.